I'm giving away one WWE World Heavyweight Championship replica belt from WWEshop.com once we hit 100,000 subscribers. Make sure you click subscribe today. There's a massive rumor that WWE and EA Sports could potentially be working together. I'm going to give you guys some more insight on that. A lot of talk, catching waves on social media. But before we get to that, let's talk about Pat McAfee. He did a, dub, uh, a WWE digital exclusive. And with this WWE digital exclusive, I mean, it, it just seems like maybe he is talking about something that could potentially happen. But if we're being realistic, it might not happen. Um, and we're talking about the possibility of him returning to the commentary desk with Michael Cole. And, and I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys. I love commentary in pro wrestling. I've gone to enough pro wrestling events live in person to realize how important commentary is. When you have people feeding you the story and they're explaining to you what's going on, sometimes you don't necessarily catch that when you're watching live in attendance. And that's why commentary is so valuable to the story that is being told in the ring. Now, I think WWE has great commentary and I think AEW has great commentary and I think Impact Wrestling has great commentary. Of course, I would be foolish not to mention uh, Caprice Coleman and Ian Riccoboni from ROH. But at the same time, too, I think it is really important that we acknowledge how great Pat McAfee and Michael Cole really are together. And basically, Michael Cole, uh, he's always been talented, but I feel like he's really brought out his personality. He's made things fun, which I think has definitely changed a little bit uh, in, in regards to how I view commentary in wwe because sometimes people are a little bit critical with Corey graves and patrick uh you know patrick kevin patrick but the thing is that i'm looking at when i look at pat mcafee and michael cole it just seems like the chemistry is there now basically on this digital exclusive for wwe.com pat mcafee says that uh he is very confident he will be commentating with michael cole again and, and obviously i would love to believe that is the case and i would love to think that pat mcafee coming back to a full-time deal would be incredible. But if I'm being realistic, it doesn't sound like that could be likely. He just signed up uh, his show with ESPN. So he went from just being a YouTube show, uh, now being on ESPN and ESPN Plus. He's doing big things with the ESPN network. And of course, uh, we just have to acknowledge the fact that he is extremely busy with every business thing that he's doing. It just doesn't seem like a full-time deal with WWE would make sense, especially when you consider that he's even doing college game day now. Um, but the thing is, I really like Pat McAfee. I think he's really good, and I like him with Michael Cole together. I think they do a really good job. It just seems fun. It doesn't seem forced, and that's exactly what I like to see out of a commentary booth. Um, look, I want Pat McAfee back. The only way I think this could work is if WWE does end up doing a deal with Disney. Keep in mind the synergies are there. Disney owns ESPN. At that point, I could see them making something happen where from a schedule perspective, it would work out. Uh, but realistically, he's also a new father. And you know that you add that element plus work, it, it just doesn't seem very likely. I hope he is very confident though. And, and if he's confident, I, I would like to be excited about it, but I don't want to get too excited about it too soon. Uh, guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about the WWE 2K uh, ordeal. And really, a lot of this comes down with um, with Endeavor and UFC. But we got to talk a little bit more about this deal in depth. Um, so for those who may not be aware of what's happening here, WWE under TKO has a very special agreement with Endeavor. So in case Endeavor ever decides to actually sell the WWE, there is a five-year non-compete clause for the company to work with other pro wrestling companies. So there is a clause that specifically stipulates that under the circumstance that Endeavor sells TKO holdings, TKO group holdings, uh, they cannot re-enter either the MMA or pro wrestling business for five years. Meltzer actually came out. He noted that when Turner Broadcasting sold WCW, uh, there was a three-year non-compete. And although Ted Turner, Bill Shaw, and Jar Jim Barnett discussed their return to the business when the cause expired, the prospect died as it would have cost too much money. So the thing is, Endeavor really has, they, they have something in the works with WWE where technically at any point in time, if they want to sell, they absolutely can. Now, it's an interesting thing to pay attention to because some people are in the business to make money and get out. Some people are in the business to stay long term. And I don't even really want to start having conversations now about, well, what if Endeavor sells 
TKO. But you would have to wonder how extremely valuable that is. And if somebody were to even buy the WWE and UFC together, because at that point, they're one company, right? The only thing I could see happening would be a massive streaming powerhouse. And I'm talking like Amazon or Apple. Like that's really it because this type of this type of merger values the company at twenty one billion dollars. Now you might be wondering, well, what does this have to do with two K and EA Sports? And I'm going to get to that in just a second. But a lot of this really has to do with the fact that, technically speaking, UFC and WWE. I know it's not resonating with a lot of people that it's one company, but they are one company, and this is something that is becoming a very big conversation on social media. Because technically speaking, even though they are two different entities, two different intellectual properties, being that they're under one company, there could be a lot of benefit as them being packaged together in a variety of ways. Now, on this channel, we talked about it the other day, where perhaps maybe on weekends, WWE would do pay-per-views on Sundays, UFC would do pay-per-views on Saturdays, SmackDown would be on Friday nights, and they would do this all in the same city as a way to package and get more money from the local government or whatever it may be. Now, the reason why that's a very interesting concept is because of the video game sector. WWE was in talks with EA, and this was 2022 roughly. There was this belief that WWE could potentially leave their video game licensing deal with 2K to go to EA Sports. And the reason for this was because there was a lot of rumors that WWE and 2K were not on the same page. WWE wasn't happy with where things were. And I actually understood a lot of that because I think we all saw what happened with WWE 2K20. There was no 2K21. Then WWE Battlegrounds came out. Um, and then look, WWE 2K22 was a success. WWE 2K23 is a success. WWE appears to be pretty damn happy with what's happening with their licensing deal. But a lot of people were wondering, does this mean WWE would have to leave their agreement with 2K and move on to one developer with EA because of the fact that EA publishes UFC uh, video games? And as of right now, that is not likely, just so people know. Um, there, There is always that possibility but it doesn't seem like that could really be the case. And, and and the reality is, despite them having talks with EA before about moving the license, yes, there was probably interest on both ends, but WWE still has time left in their agreement with 2K Sports. And until that agreement expires, I, I don't see a scenario where they decide to change course. Now, I think what would be better for the UFC and for WWE would be to having their games licensed to multiple developers, just like it was in the in, in the old days, right? WWE could have WWE 2K24, and then you can have another company create WWE Here Comes the Pain Remastered, just like you could do UFC 5, and then you could do gimmicks and stuff like that. I think it would be a great idea, different types of games, simulation, you know, 2K could be the exclusive simulation game, uh, then they could do archaic stuff with other developers and stuff like that, but as of right now, WWE is still currently in a deal, now we'll see how TKO does things going forward, um, obviously when the deal expires, but as of right now, don't get too excited. And don't forget, I'm giving away one WWE World Heavyweight Championship replica belt at 100,000 subscribers. All you got to do is click subscribe.